We know what he is. He's a politician. So if you want to talk about it, we'll play some sound. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So now we know what radical Catholicism is. It comes in a quiet voice. You don't understand something. People got mad at me the other day when I said that each religion has radicals in it. We know about radical Islam. We've been talking about it for years since 9-11. We have a Homeland Security Department that was created specifically to stop radical Islam. Instead, it's uh, working against the American people in most parts. Instead of uh, protecting us against radical Islam, which is what it was created for. They infiltrated it. The Muslim Brotherhood infiltrated DHS, according to everyone who knows what's going on. So you take this bureaucracy and it turns on the people. But nevertheless, we all know what radical Islam is, except the president who doesn't even acknowledge it exists. People know what radical Islam is. Oh, they know it very well. And we've seen other radicals from other religions. But now we see what a radical Catholic is. And I will tell you again, and it's not easy for me to say, that a bomb kills people, but ideas can kill a nation. Look what it did to Russia. Look what it did to Cambodia. Look what it's doing to America. Ideas can kill nations. This man, my friends, is not a holy man. Be very aware indeed. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, Catholics, I have news for you. You don't have to agree with the Pope on economics to be a good Catholic. The church doesn't teach that. And in all fairness, even Pope Francis has said this. He says, I'm only infallible if I speak ex cathedra, but I shall never do that, so I am not infallible. What does that mean? Well, I cover it all in, um, I'm reading from my book, Government Zero, at the risk of the displeasure of those who can't keep up with me. But this chapter is very important. The church defines papal infallibility very na narrowly. They only consider him infallible when in the exercise of his office as shepherd and teacher of all Christians, in virtue of his supreme authority, he defines a doctrine concerning faith or morals to be held by the whole church. On other subjects, his opinion is just that, an opinion. When he tells Catholics to care about the poor and work towards a world with less poverty and suffering, he's advancing the message of Jesus. When he opines on the best economic system to make that happen, he's out of his depth. Page 203 of government zero. So he goes to the Castros who have an economic system that has destroyed Cuba and destroyed the, the Cuban people. And he, he applauds them, doesn't meet with the, with the uh, prisoners there. Comes to this country and he meets with prisoners in our prison. Communists, naked. So well, I can read more, I'm not going to right now. I wanna tell you about how Catholic Charities lost its soul. It's a remarkable article. Most of you don't know that most of the money the Catholic Charities gets, and by the way, the same is said about the uh, Ghanifs and the Association of Jewish Family and Children's Agencies, or the Ghanifs and the Lutheran Services in America, and Arm of the Welfare State. 65% of Catholic Charities' $2.3 billion annual budget, 65% now flows from government sources. Did you know that? And little of that is used for religious purposes. Little of it is used for values-based services. Most of the services its 1,400 member agencies and 46,000 paid employees provide is straight out welfare state. And so far from being a model for reforming today's welfare state approach to helping the poor, Catholic Charities USA is one of the nation's most powerful advocates for outworn welfare state ideas, especially the idea that social and economic forces over which the individual has no control rather than his own attitudes and behavior are the reason for poverty. Do you hear me? This should be a warning to policymakers seeking to privatize the care of the needy, that they had better pick and choose prudently, because some of the institutions of civil society have been tainted with the same value-free worldview that has made most government-run poverty efforts a disaster that don't even help the poor. It just makes them poorer. Now, what's sad about this is that until the 1960s, Catholic charitable institutions, benevolent societies, hospitals, orphanages, reformatories, 
did great work. They served the poor. They brought them into the mainstream of American life. In New York, the tireless philanthropic efforts of Catholic leaders like Archbishop John Hughes during the second half of the 19th century so uplifted New York's immigrant Irish at the time America's first underclass that by the turn of the 20th century, most of them were mainstream American citizens. You should read, read about this. You can read all about this in my book, Government Zero. No one's touched any of this. So just remember the numbers if you don't remember anything else. $2.3 billion Catholic charities flows from government sources. And most of it has nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with values. You hear? It's all about an extension of the welfare state. This is just what went on in the ex-Soviet Union. The Russians know what I'm talking about. The Americans don't. That's all. I don't know what to do now to place a more pope. So let's go to a number two. -a. A I would on a savage nation. encourage you to keep in mind all those people around us who are trapped in a cycle of poverty. They too need to be given hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, fight yeah. against yeah, poverty that. and hunger yeah, yeah, yeah. must be fought constantly yeah, right. and on many fronts, right. especially in its course what? I know that many Americans I can't listen to it I'm sorry it's just nonsense he's telling me we have to treat help the poor we we have a welfare industry in the country what's it done for the poor it's created more poor the Pope should learn one lesson I learned when I was poor you want to hear it you can catch if you can you want a poor man you want to help a poor man you want to help a poor man don't give him a fish give him a fishing rod I'll never forget that. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was a poor graduate student looking for grants. And I had one day I had the opportunity to meet one of the wealthiest men on earth who was interested in botany at the time. And it was in Hawaii. I'll never forget it. And he came to Hawaii. I won't say from where or what his name was. He was a lovely man. And I thought that by getting an introduction to him, it would be like the golden key. He was going to give me a huge grant, and I would just sit on my behind and collect plants for the rest of my life and never have to really work. I could be like most scientists in America, which is why I'd like to run the NIH and run most of them out of the country. But nevertheless, I thought by meeting this billionaire, and I'm talking billionaire when billionaire meant something. I mean billionaire when the B had some meaning. So he was interested in my field of ethnobotany, and we talked. And uh, I got a note from him later on. And he said, you can help people more by giving them a fishing rod than a fish. Now, I don't know whether he sent me any lures or any rods, but I think that was the end of the relationship. He tried to guide me into helping myself, and so I helped myself. It only took 40 years to get where I am after that. It was a slow, it was, it was very quick. It was an overnight, I'm an overnight success. It took me 45 years to get where I am. But the thing is, is that I learned a lesson. And uh, it's something you can teach your children as well. You know that. So, look, the Catholic Charities is a, is, a, is a business, and I'm not just singling them out. I've also mentioned the others. The uh, Association of Jewish Family and Children's Agencies, the Lutheran Services in America, Baptist Charities of America. Every one of these churches has been compromised and bought out by the Obama administration. Their own lock, stock, and barrel through the grants, just like our scientists. How much original science is there left in this, war, in this country? We used to have the most innovative scientists in the world. Now they're all owned by the government, and because of that, very little innovation occurs. Unless it has something to do with global warming or the progressive agenda, it's not being funded. It's that simple. We are very much in the same state of science as the Soviet Union was when it fell into Lysenkoism. Again, a big chapter in my incredible book, Government Zero, probably the most important book I ever wrote. I have to tell you it's important, and I want you to buy it, and I want Catholics particularly to buy one for a doubting Catholic. I want you to help them understand that they can be a good Catholic and not believe in socialism. 855-407-28. Then he goes into a subject that really bothers me, which is the environment. Flies here on an air-conditioned jet, and he's not the Jefferson airplane. Oh, how'd you expect him to get here? I didn't expect him to paddle here in the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. I expect that he'd fly on, a, on an air-conditioned jet. But you don't see the hypocrisy in this? Okay, here we go. Clip four now. Let's hear it. Let's play. I call for a courageous and responsible effort 
to redirect our steps and to avert the most serious effects of the environmental deterioration caused by human activity. I'm convinced that we can make a difference. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All go to the, the green gangsters took a took a, an applause line. The green gangsters in there gave a clap job. They saw another billion dollars in the cash register for more green green nonsense. Then he attacked the arms trade. Yeah, family relationships. Didn't say a word about gay marriage. He spoke in eloquent terms about nothing. Here, listen to six and tell me if you can hear anything about gay marriage in six. Listen. I cannot hide my concern for the family, which is threatened, perhaps as never before, from within or without. Fundamental relations have been caught into question. No kidding. As is the very basis of marriage and the family. Really? Go, go, go. I can only reiterate yeah, right. the importance and above all, okay. the richness and the beauty of family life. Yeah, right. it's, it's homilies. It means nothing. How could anyone get mad at a statement like that? He didn't say anything. He didn't say marriage is between a man and a woman, and it will always be between a man and a woman, and that's what the church teaches. He said he left it open, whatever. You want to marry a donkey, marry a donkey. Have a donkey family. How does that differ from anyone in the radical communities in this country? Tell me. Then he goes into, no religion is immune from forms of individual delusion without saying one word about radical Islam, the blowing up of churches, the, the rape and enslavement of Christians in the Middle East by Muslims. Not one word. So what good is he? He comes here and insults us, and he gives the radical Islamists a, a pass. So no wonder people are agitated over this. And I'm sorry if I offend you. I don't mean to. I do not mean to. I apologize if you find this offensive. But it was, it's really your failing, not mine, if you can't separate the man from the church. If you can't separate the man from the church, I, I don't apologize for that. He's only a man. He's not God. You know, what's interesting is that we were taught all lives is don't bow down to false idols. I was taught that since I'm a child. I learned it. My name means Mikael, and which derives from the Greek, he who does not bow down to idols, or he, or he, who, overturns, he or he who overturns icons. Well, what is this about? He's just an opinionated man. Why do I have to believe him? Where does his intelligence supersede that of my own or of others? The fact is, it's a Marxist encyclical. That's what he gave you today, a Marxist encyclical. And I have it all spelled out, uh, Laudato Si on Care for Our com Common Home. It's a thinly veiled political manifesto combining pronouncements on both economics and climate science the Pope has no expertise in whatsoever. In it, he takes all of the scientific and ec economic fallacies that I've talked about on this show and wrote about in this book and stamps them with the official seal of the church, which is something amazing. Laudato Si opens with some quotes from St. Francis of Assisi that appear cherry-picked to sound like the leftist New Age Gaia narrative. And that's no accident. And you better listen to me right now because nobody in radio has ever done what I've done for you now, what I'm going to do for you now. It's right out of my book, Government Zero. That's what you'd expect from me, and that's what I do for you. I research. As a man trained in the scholarly ways, I research. The Pope's science advisor for this letter, or scientific advisor for this letter, is the radical Gaia worshiper and climate hoax scientist Hans Joachim Schnellnuber. Consider this passage of the Pope's encyclical. In the words of this beautiful canticle, St. Francis of Assisi reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life and a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister mother earth who sustains and governs us and who produces various fruit with colored flowers and herbs, close quote. Now, St. Francis's poetic language here may sound like paganism, but not when taken within the whole context of his writing. He was certainly very concerned about the environment and all of God's creatures, but he didn't worship the earth itself as a goddess, as the pagans did. 
Neither did he consider it a living organism, as the modern secular god